Bull's theorem. Well, it tells us here, let f be continuous. So let f be a function that's continuous on the closed interval a to b, okay, and differentiable on the open interval a to b, okay, so not including the two endpoints. And if f of a equals f of b, then there is at least one number c in this interval a, b, such that f prime of c equals zero. Okay, let's see if we can kind of just unpack that uh, real quickly here. Basically, when it says that it's continuous, that means that there's no break in the graph. So for example, if we were graphing this, okay, and let's just say that the, uh, the graph looks something like this, okay, I'll just make it like that, okay? And let's just say that this is uh, A over here, and let's say this is uh, B over here, and you can see that you know it's continuous, there's no breaks in the graph. I'm not picking up my pencil or my pen. Okay, differentiable means that you know at any point along this curve, okay, we can find the slope, we can take the derivative. There's no corners, there's no cusps, nothing like that. It's smooth, we can take the derivative, okay? And then the last part says that if the y value, so whenever you see f of x, that's really saying the y value, the output uh, at a, if that equals the y value at b, okay, then there has to be at least one number in between a and b such that the derivative equals zero, meaning that the slope of the tangent line is horizontal. So I'm gonna adjust my location of b right here. Let's make b right here, okay? And what you can see is that a and b, okay, they have the same y value. See how they're at the same height, okay, like that? And so what that means is that somewhere in between a and b, the derivative, okay, meaning the slope of the tangent line has to be zero. And you can see that would occur somewhere right about here, okay, there would be your tangent line right like so, and it's gonna have a slope of zero. Now, it can occur at more than one point. So say, for example, if the graph was looking more like this, okay, then there could be multiple points, okay, in between A and B where the slope of the tangent line is zero, okay? But basically, the way I think about it, just real briefly, is that, you know, if they have the same Y value at A and B, you have a couple options. One, it could just be like a horizontal line, okay? Or you could think of the graph as gonna go up at some point, but then it has to come back down, right, to get to that same height or that same Y value. Or the graph could go down and then come back up, again, to reach that same Y value. So because it has to reach that same Y value at both of the endpoints, the graph has to basically bend or turn somewhere in between those two points. And that's what allows us to find the point where the tangent line is gonna be uh, horizontal. It's like a roller coaster. You're going up and then you're coming back down. You reach that same height. So somewhere in between there, you're going to be horizontal. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So example number one, uh, we've got a function here, f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. And the interval that they're giving us is negative 1 to 3. So first thing we want to test, okay, is uh, to see if Rolle's theorem applies, okay. And we know that this is a polynomial, so we know that it's continuous, there's no breaks in it, and we know that it's smooth, meaning that we can take the derivative uh, anywhere along this curve, okay, uh, even in between negative one and three. The next thing that we wanna test is that, what does the value of f of negative one equal, and what does the value of f of three equal? Well, you can see if we put negative one in for x, we get negative one squared minus two times negative one plus one. Okay, this is one plus, uh, two, okay, plus one, which is four. And if we put three in, what do we get? Three squared minus two times three plus one. That's nine minus six, which is three, plus one equals four. So what you can see is we have uh, negative one, four, and we have three comma four, and you can see that they have the same y value. Okay, so what that means is that somewhere in between negative one and three, the slope of the tangent line must be equal to zero. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the derivative, so f prime of x equals two x minus two. We're gonna set that equal to zero, okay, add two to both sides, and then divide by two, and you can see that that value is gonna be when x equals one. One, of course, is in between negative one and positive three, and the slope of the tangent line at that point is gonna be zero, it's gonna be horizontal. 
If you want to graph this just to understand it a little bit better, this is actually a parabola that's been shifted right one. So it looks something like this, okay? And so over here we have negative one, four, that's this point, and we have three, four, that's this point. You can see that they're at the same height. And in between negative one and three, there's a point, in this case it's at positive one, where the horizontal, uh, you know, the tangent line is horizontal at zero. Now it happens to be right, you know, in between, right in the middle at the midpoint. That's not always the case. Uh, I just did this as a simple example, just so I can show you the graph and just kind of show you how it works. But again, you want to make sure that it satisfies all these conditions, continuous, differentiable, and that the, the y values at both of the endpoints are the same. And then that apply, Rolle's theorem applies, meaning that in between those two endpoints, the tangent line has to be horizontal. So let's look at another example. Number two, here they give us a function, x squared minus four all divided by x. Okay, and we're looking at the interval negative two to two. Before we can jump into Rolle's theorem, we have to see if it applies. So we have to look at, is it continuous? Is it differentiable? And are the y values at the two endpoints the same? Well, okay, first of all, we notice this denominator and we know the denominator can't equal zero because if it equals zero, this is gonna be undefined. In this particular graph, we're gonna have a horizontal, I'm sorry, a vertical asymptote, okay, at uh, x equals zero. So that means that x cannot equal zero. Zero is in between negative two and two. So this graph is not continuous on this interval, which means that Rolle's theorem does not apply. So we